This is Iowa State champ Alex Thompson. This is Josh Elwer from the University of Northern Iowa, and you're listening to Potentially Dangerous on IA Wrestle. Hey, is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. From high school to international wrestling, on the mat and beyond, this is the Potentially Dangerous podcast with the guys from IA Wrestle. If you're a fighter, you like a fight. If you're an American, you like a fight. If you're an Iowa Hawkeye, you know you're going to get a fight. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and all your podcast-friendly apps. And follow us on social media platforms at IA Russell. Time to strap it up and get to the show. All right, we are back with Potentially Dangerous episode 102. Last week we brought you... The Fab 50 details from Lars under Baki talked about the shenanigans in Fort Dodge. I've been hearing been hearing some rumors that uh, some things are going to be changing in Fort Dodge soon. So be lo- on the lookout for an announcement. Uh, I'm not sure um, if we if we uh, caused a stir or anything like that, but uh, I hope we did. Hopefully, some things get changed. Um, I, I've been getting some more details on the situation, so we'll report on those when we. We get more details, but for now, we're going to let that one go. Um, but on the show tonight, Lars is off. Ross is back on with me, as always. Fight night was last week. We had the All-Star Classic. We had all kinds of just weird things going on. Fight night really, though, kind of like just started last week off, and uh, it just trickled. All It's been just trickling for like the last seven days, Ross. Um, what? You know how how did you ta- how did you take fight night? Let's just start there. How did you take fight night? Did you enjoy it? Fight night was was crazy. This last week's been crazy, Tony. Um, I don't know if it was Thomas Gilman, if it's just you, because I don't know. Everybody's been going off this week, haven't they? Just on on social media, it, it does seem like it. I mean, I feel like everyone's got a prick up their butt or something there's speak yeah the first thing i noticed was the cheerleaders coming after you uh after last week's podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> i got hit hard with the cheerleaders for a little bit uh but you know i i i just felt like i sh- i i should have stopped i should have stopped uh i'm i'm t- i'm a grown grown man and i'm talking to high school girls about cheerleading um but their their point was not the point of the what I was trying to get across, or what I'm sure wrestling people in Fort Dodge are getting across, is this isn't about cheerleading or, for, or or to wrestling or badminton to wrestling or soccer to wrestling. It's it's a purpose of the voters of Fort Dodge. From my understanding, ninety percent of them thought this was going to be a wrestling room, and maybe ten percent of them knew it was going to be a multi-purpose room. Supposedly there was meetings where there was talk that this was going to be a multi-purpose room, but man, uh, these cheerleaders laid in on laid in on me. They obviously one tweeted, and literally they must have been like in the same room or something because it got like thirty retweets within like thirty seconds. So they must have just got done with practice and just blew it up. But yes, that that those those are the ones that started the week off just full of hate. So yeah, I mean there was blowback from the last podcast. Um, and then, you know, to, to your question, what did I think of fight night? Um, you know, I, there's, a, there's a lot of feelings. I think a lot of people are really upset with Thomas Gilman. Um, obviously he went off, dropped a couple of F-bombs, um, told people he'd, he'd be willing to meet him in the parking lot if they wanted to, kind of like he did at NCAAs. But uh, overall, you know, Doug Schwab, I love when he gets up. Um, I said it on Twitter, but I, I love that he always asks for a rebuttal and they always kind of just ignore his, his request. Um, and, and as to Gilman's comments, I don't want to let him off the hook of, of what I think. I'm not saying I endorsed it, but um, I just think the delivery was wrong. I, I think if he would have said it, I think how he said it is is a big deal, what people are all worked up about. If he said it a little more good natured, I think it I, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, I watched it live, and I wasn't there, but uh, watching it live, at first, I was like, all right, this is just Thomas Gilman, and then it just kind of, I don't know if he knew what he was getting into exactly, I guess, um, 
And I definitely the message was did not come off well. Um, I think the message I took away from it is Iowa basically is saying that they're too good for fight night now, and, that, and you can come to Iowa City and, and watch them. And that's you know, that was really kind of the message that I think they're too good for that. They're too good for the small town Iowa, and I, I just they're not. They're not though. Like they don't. I, I don't feel like Tom Brands. That's the message that he preaches, right? So I was just a little confused by that. Obviously, F bombs. You know, if you're in a bar past ten o'clock, nine thirty at night, it's a bar. It's not a restaurant, from my understanding. Um, and if you're upset because your kids heard that, I mean, you should have known what the heck you're getting into. Grown men drinking beer. Uh, so that that to me, that's not something people should be upset about. Um, yeah, if you don't like the language, Thomas Gilman is definitely gonna let you have it. Um, he's not at the University of Iowa anymore. Um, I think maybe too many f bombs, but that's fight me. You know, it's, it's fight night. I, I mean, I'm, that's kind of what we want. Did he cross the line a little bit? Yes. Where I think kind of, I would say flow. We were the only, the only ones, other people that really picked it up on media. Um, where that kind of hurt Thomas Gilman and and fight night in general was everybody wanted to fast forward to Thomas Gilman's part right but they didn't listen to Doug Schwab basically be like hey we're here to some feelings are you know hopefully don't get hurt here but we're going to give jabs to each other that's what fight night is about this wasn't like a press conference and that's where I think people are kind of getting confused because it looked like a press conference but it definitely is not like that we're supposed to be joking people and you know I talked to Jason Bryan a little bit about you know what said a fight night shouldn't be in the media like we shouldn't be touching it and Unfortunately, um, you know this. This has been streamed for like the last six years. It's been it's been on the in the public scene. Do I think it should be? Probably not. It should be a you know not stream. Media could be there, but it's one of those things like we know what fight night is, Ross, but we don't talk about fight night or fight club type deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, because some of these coaches could lose their jobs over maybe some things they said. Um, I guess, I mean, you know, I kind of forgot that Gilman said that they were done, you know, they're not going to come to fight night anymore. And I, I guess I kind of want to go back to that and, and agree with you that it, it did seem a little weird, it seemed out of character to, I, I don't know, it kind of came off like they were defensive. I don't know how they got such short notice. I felt like, uh, you know, everybody would have got the same amount of notice, right? Yeah. Um. I feel like we, you know, we learned about it last week. Uh, I can't imagine, you know, too many people are getting that much, you know, heads up on it. Um, and it's not like I'm, I'm pretty sure Ben Burhow was there. So Iowa did have a university coach there. They just decided to send up Thomas Gilman. So, I, I mean, I really didn't get it because it's not like they couldn't send a coach and they ha- the only person they could send was Gilman. Um, so I really didn't get that comment, but. For the most part, like you said, it's fight night. Some jabs are going to get thrown. Um, Personally, I always thought Schwab did a really good job in years past, um, and he still kind of kicked KJ when he was (laughs) – because he wasn't there. I I love that that little uh, cheap shot, so to speak. But, I mean, it it was fun. That was the point. Um, And like I said, I think Gilman just – he delivered it wrong. Um, And, you know, tone – and timing is everything. If you're trying to be a comedian, if you if you go listen to comedic podcasts, that's what that's all they talk about. So I think this was really close to to being a non non factor, but it was the delivery that just kind of now we're all you know in a huff and and it, and it set off. I feel like a chain reaction to the rest of social media the last <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah, people in wrestling just like we're, no filter. I mean, myself included. Like usually. I, Usually, like, I just, like, let stuff go because I have some people that will troll me from time to time. But, like, I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. Like, these people are idiots. Like, I'm going to put these guys on blast a little bit. So, um, it is what it is, right? I mean, like, the guy from former Grandview wrestler calls us out for go- – or calls you out or whoever, I guess, for covering Iowa wrestle-offs which there were more people probably at the Russell Offs and the Nichols Open and, and said basically, hey, I Russell will cover the Russell Offs, but they won't go cover a real tournament. Well, we had someone there. 
right? I mean, we, we can't be at every single tournament. I mean, should we have gone to the freaking All Star Classic? Should we have flown there? I mean, people just I mean want to compare us to Track Wrestling or Flow Wrestling. We're a state company. I mean, we're a state company that's freaking four years old. We don't have funds to go do this. I mean, we we don't do the best job we can, right? But come on, for I mean, this kid probably wasn't even there. He probably didn't even go. I the the coverage of an open tournament's always kind of a interesting thing to me because I mean, did he really want us to be tweeting about you know what round of sixteen matchups in in an open tournament where you know. As Flo likes to say famously, the, these Google kids, the Google losses, the Google guys, you got to figure out who the hell, you know, and yeah. and they're out there, you know, these D1 guys are rolling in the first round because that's what happens at Opens. Uh, you know, last year we sent three people to the Grandview Open, um, and it was a really good tournament, but you just, at a, at a tournament like that, covering when there's an Iowa guy in literally every match based on, you know, JUCO, Division Two, Division Three, D1 level, NAIA, it's, there's just so much. People, people would just unfollow because there'd be so much information on their Twitter. So we kind of pick and choose our spots. Um, obviously, Iowa wrestle-offs are a really big deal. Um, standing room only in the Dan Gable wrestling complex there. Um, it, was, it was very hot on Saturday, I'll tell you that. So, you know, people are going to be, you know, that's where some action is. Uh, obviously, we get a lot of web traffic off that. That's not a secret. But, I mean, so we, we kind of played to our audience, and we knew that wrestle-offs are only going to be from from 10 till, say, noon. After that, you can just go full into Harold Nichols because, you know, that's you're not competing against yourself. So I really didn't – I couldn't believe we were kind of – getting picked on by somebody for when we actually had people at both events. But I guess that's kind of whatever. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get that right with success. I mean, it's just like people, you know, we, we can't cover Western Iowa. We cover a lot of Eastern Iowa. We just don't have people that are in our organization that work out there or live out there. We've at, we've tried to have people in Eastern Iowa or Western Iowa, you know, do some stuff for us, but no one's ever stepped at the plate. So it is what it is. Uh, we might we might have somebody coming down the plate or coming down the pipe for that. But okay, uh, all right, I like. I got, a, I got a lead. I got a lead. I'll tell you later. Okay, um, all right. I'm, do you want to get the want to get some wrestling talk and get over this social media drama here? Yeah, what I guess. I guess. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's get let's get into it. I mean, let, let's go. I guess let's go right into it. I mean, I think this could be a little bit of drama. I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, I just know that he's not on the team. I haven't been able to talk to him, but I broke the news. <laughs> I broke the news um, Monday night that Danny Vega is no longer at Iowa State. This is a kid that came from Grand Canyon, and he when he went to he committed to Iowa State, he said like this is a place he wanted to be since he was in seventh grade or something like that. A long time he wanted to be a cyclone, so I was a little shocked by it. Uh, I got a tip from it, then I called SAD, told me, yeah, he's not on the team for personal reasons. So um, as somebody, you know, Ross, you did, you've done previews on the Cyclones. You know, how big of a hit is this for Iowa State? I got to imagine it's it's a huge blow. Um, yeah, when you texted me that today, it, it kind of blew my mind. Um, obviously, they got Jacob Allison, former Waukee stud, walking back onto the team after, you know, wrestling in the wrestling club. Uh, and they had that John uh, Marmaleo. I want. I don't. I'm not. I might be butchering his name, but um, so they had those guys for backups. And Vega was going to be the guy. He's a like three time Fargo champ or something crazy. Um, three time Arizona State champ. Pretty big name. Um, you know they they got Austin Gomez. They got a commitment from him when he was a junior, and then he kind of grew into 133. So it was you know Vega was going to be the guy for four straight years at 25. And now all of a sudden Vega's no longer on the team and the future for 125 just kind of got a whole lot more barren and, you know, Dresser's doing a fine job recruiting this class, but the, the miss of Brody Teske for Kevin Dresser just hurts a whole lot more right now. Well, th- and this is kind of what I'm thinking too, is it, they, did they give Scully money to, to Vega? 
that would have been a KJ recruit. So how much scholarship money was Vega getting? Can Iowa State make another play at Brody Teske? I mean, he's verbal. We've seen plenty of people decommit after a verbal. I don't think he's, he has a signed, right? So Sign, Signing day is actually Wednesday, so this podcast should be up Tuesday. So, I mean, right now, signing day hasn't come yet, but that's what I was going to ask you. Do, you. do you think Iowa could, could throw some more money at Brody with that? Would that change anything? I It could. I, I mean, I know Iowa State was in his top two. So uh, from what I know from my discussions with people is money w- you know did play into the, to the, the final decision. So if you have money, you definitely got to throw it at Brody Teske because you already were expecting to have it with Vega. So use that extra money. And give him a full ride. I don't know if Iowa State was given a full ride. I have no idea. Um, I don't know those details. I have heard the Penn State deal is pretty pretty good. So uh, Iowa State could make a a play here. Um, It'll just be interesting to see how that's handled. I got to imagine Northern Iowa is still on Brody Teske. Uh, I've heard some rumbles there. I mean, they've got Drew Bennett. They've got both Lara boys now. So, you know, Bennett, Cade, both graduate with Brody. Maybe they want to stick together. Uh, that would be a, a huge move. Um, something I did not think could happen, uh, just because I, I know I think Brody wants to be. I, I won't say that, but um, uh, Teske is a guy that wants to be at you know a top five program. Northern Iowa is not there yet. They're growing, right? But they want to be a top five program. So that's why I think Penn State was the, the team. So um, getting him to go to Iowa State, you and I, heck, even Iowa, I think will be still tough. But Iowa State would maybe have a shot if they do have a full ride opportunity. So we'll see. But Vega, man, I just, the one thing I can think of, so I was watching some flow videos, Ross, and I was like, well, how, I mean, what happened? And I know I, I saw that like, Vega was just not – having some good practices. I heard he's just had been struggling to get through practices and just kind of getting beat on a little bit. And Zadek was just yelling at him in a couple of these, like get off, you know, get off the mat. And I just, I've heard he's kind of been taking a few lumps, right? I mean, and it's, well, tough. it's tough. It's tough for some of these kids that go from being, well, this kid's a three-time Arizona state champ, three-time Fargo national champ. And, or whatever he is, um, and then you go to the Iowa State room, and you're getting beat on by 33-pounders, uh, Ian Parker and Austin Gomez. It, it don't feel good. Well, and the, and the other thing is, you know, it's it's the culture change. You you were there at Media Day, and Marcus Simmons said, you know, uh, a, a really tough practice last year under KJ is a really easy practice for them now. They go a lot harder. Um, so there there's that that mentality shift that dresser's trying to institute. He wants that killer instinct. Um, he's got to, he's kind of got to bring it out of some guys and he's got to find the guys that just don't have it. And one of the things I think we've kind of heard dresser suggest hint to the media in his interviews is that, you know, there's been some guys on the team that maybe don't have the drive. Maybe they don't have the right, you know, culture fit in the room that you know there's going to be some guys that maybe just don't fit and they're going to leave so maybe Danny Vega was just one of those guys that he just doesn't mess with you know Zadek and and Metcalf you know they're we all know what they're like um they're just they got they're they're mean they were they were you know if you want to I don't want to go literal but they were killers on the mat um and, and maybe that's just not the you know that's obviously not what Vega was recruited into he was kind of it's it's a lot different atmosphere and if you're not into that you're out you know so yeah talking to Zadek at media day he was just like you know we we've had to have some brutal honesty with kids some tough love and dresser said too like we've got a lot of people head nodding like yes 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 but we're not seeing a lot of people with action so people are thinking that they're doing the right things but they're not doing the right things so I mean, I don't know if Vegas that got one of those guys, but there's got to be a reason why you just up and leave the team. I mean, we're wrestling season just started, so he's not wrestling first semester. I, I heard someone, you know, I heard there was rumblings Arizona State, 
but that was just uh, from some Snapchat commentating. So maybe go back to Arizona State, which would make sense. Uh, but you got to imagine, you know, a lot of a lot of teams are needing a hundred twenty five pounder right now. So Grandview, hey, boom, <laughs> Danny Vega, oh. Danny Vega should go to the Open this weekend and just wrestle unattached and just cause all kind of drama to where he could possibly go. You, you know, Grandview, <laughs> Grandview would help. Yeah, heck, they'll take him for sure. Oh, man, Nick Mitchell would love that. He'd be licking his chops. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah, he'd love it for sure. He, so, does, he does a good job developing those guys. So. Yeah, I, that's, um, I'm excited for the Grandview Open. Let's go Let's go there next. I mean, we're streaming that this weekend, eight mats, Ross. Uh, we've, we've been there in the past and just done a couple videos – uh, and put them on YouTube for you. But this year, this is the first event that we're going to have on our track cast uh, season pass. It'll be $10, or you can just buy our season pass now for 65 bucks. And that, that we're going to have 25 plus events this year. So the, definitely the best deals to do the season pass. We don't have all the events up in track wrestling right now because we're waiting on the tournament directors to put them up on track. But I can promise you, uh, we are going to have 25 plus events this year. This will be our first college event, probably our only college event. We're actually working to try to get the NAI National Championships that's going to be in Des Moines on the IA Russell Season Pass too. So people from Iowa can hopefully get that pass, get that event um, under their under that platform. But Ross, we saw Iowa come here last year. Marinelli made his debut, and one of his match videos I looked today had like nine thousand views, and no one, you know. He wasn't wrestling anybody, really. Uh, so, Iowa, you were at WrestleOffs. Do you know, have you heard about, you know, if they're going to send Warner, are they going to send anybody from Iowa, or are they going all the Luther Open? I heard it's a, it's a no-go for, for Iowa this year. I don't know if it's, I mean, they, they sent people in the past. I think the last two years, that's where a lot of the true freshmen have gone. Um, like Michael Kemmer had a pretty big tournament there, I think. Um, I know, well, didn't, I think there was like the 141s. That's where they sent two years ago to kind of have a wrestle off. And then obviously last year, you know, we had that Marinelli debut where he was the only true freshman in the open bracket. But I, I just heard that, you know, they're, they're not sending them there this year. Uh, obviously, the the varsity team doesn't have anything on the schedule till the next weekend. Uh, Iowa City duels, so definitely no varsity. But I mean, Iowa State's got a duel on Sunday, so I don't imagine you know their starters are going to be there. Um, you and I is supposed to be off till their Cornell duel, so I don't know if they're sending their red shirts there. But I mean, I heard no Iowa. Have you heard on anybody else? I haven't heard. I haven't heard on Iowa confirm. Uh, they're usually a late. Register. They might. They're gonna rush. They're they're gonna send some people. I would be shocked if they didn't. But uh, I know you and I talked to some people, and it sounds like you and I are gonna send a good amount of their guys. They they have some injuries that they've been dealing with, but it sounds like you and I is gonna be sending their starters in red shirts there. And Iowa State talked to Kanan Store. He was out for the Nichols Open, and. Um, you know, he sounds like Iowa State's bringing some people, so I don't think that uh, they will wrestle him at the Open, but uh, he will be good to go for the, ne- the 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 next duel that Iowa State has on that Sunday. But it sounds like Iowa State will be bringing some people, so I hope that you know obviously that happens. But we got a ton of ten NAI teams that will be there, and and possibly. I talked to Brody Teske. Brody Teske's thinking about entering the Open. Because it was a McKee and Gable Stevenson was in the Dactronics. You, so I think this might be triggering some high school kids to be like, well, why not? Why, I mean, wrestling starts on Monday. It's official day of high school practice. So why, why not enter it? But I think in Iowa it's a little different than Minnesota, Ross. So I think they're going to have to – he'll have to do some kind of petition – with the Iowa High School Athletic Association to be able to wrestle with college athletes, uh, so I don't know. I don't know if he can do it because when we've mm-hmm. tried to do the Night of Conflict and have like college matchups in it, that's a big no-no. But I think you can petition. Uh, that might be just an Iowa thing. I'm not sure. But you. Be- so- oh man! I, yeah, I mean. 
because I feel like you know it's an NCAA rule if you if you hold a high school event say in a gym like the West Gym if we had our War at West Gym event and then later that you know we did that in the afternoon later that day you and I was going to have a duel the the entire uh, a gym would have to be cleared out all fans before they could let uh, fans in for the next duel so you can't have you know, high school event right before a college event. So I do know that there's already, I think that might be an NCAA rule too. Uh, you've talked about how night of conflict where we ran into that, you know, with the Iowa high school athletic association. So they probably got some rule. Uh, obviously the NCAA is okay putting kids in an open cause we saw it this last weekend. Um, but I mean, what, what are your thoughts on te- Just let's just go say Teske does get in. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I would hope that he would enter, He'd have. To, I think he'd have to enter the open. I don't think he can enter the freshman sophomore. I think you have to be technically in the open if he wanted to come. So teams that are there, I mean Concordia, Ellsworth, Graceland, Grandview's there. I imagine they got a good twenty-five pounder. I haven't looked at their lineup yet. Iowa Central. Iowa Central's got uh, Todd Small, who I think was a national champ. JUCO. Iowa Lakes, Iowa Western. Uh, McKendry, Midland, Oklahoma Wesleyan, Providence, SIE, so, or Southern Illinois, Ed- Edwardsville, UNI, Iowa, Iowa State, William Penn, and York College. Those are some of the teams. 25 teams are, are, are kind of registered right now. I'm not sure how. I don't know if they put in the teams from last year's event. And just copied over for this year, and just hoping that they're coming again. So that that's something I just don't know yet. I think you can't really project how Brody. I don't know how. I, th- I always I thought Brody Teske talking about like Brody Teske and Alex Thompson. I think Brody Teske is a better college wrestler based off of just him being. He's a little bit more defensive and picks his spots where Thompson's willing to let it fly. So I think right now, right now, Brody Testy would be a better college wrestler. But I do think in the future, Thompson will be better just because I think he'll adapt more to the college wrestling style. So I think, I think Testy would do well. I think, I think it would give him an idea of where he does need to go collegiately. He you know, went out to Super 32, didn't get what he wanted out there. So I think he's a little, a little hungry. I would love. I mean, if, I, if there's a way to make it happen, I say we try to do our, you know, do our best to make it happen. So we'll see. Maybe Brody Teske on Saturday. Maybe we can talk Alex Thompson to coming in. Both at blow 20, it up. Both both at twenty five. Let's make it happen. So Grammy Open, yeah, this weekend on IA Wrestle Track Wrestling, ten dollars, sixty five dollars. Get that season pass, live archive video. We'll be at all kinds of great events this year. Council Classic, Ed Winger, Mendenhall. We're working on the Keith Young. That's never been streamed before, so Keith Young could become an IRS all this year. AU State Tournament and uh, AU National Duels, Corn Cob Nationals, <laughs> Christmas Classic, Grade School State, Junior High State. Got a ton of events. Let's move on to you and I media day. How about that? It's a little bit. Uh, Bryce Stiert's gonna redshirt. I think that what I what I know, Ross. You know, I don't want to speculate if who's gonna be you know, at that at that weight. We just don't know enough about those guys yet. But from what I understand, you know, Bryce Stiert just mentally he's not there right now. So I think they just decided to you know put him out for a year. And come back, and they're they're just they're really young right now, so they can afford to you know take them off the mat. So that, that's kind of what I know. What have you heard? I I honestly haven't heard anything. Um, you know, I didn't know if it was maybe he was a little dinged up, but uh, I think he wrestled. Maybe I know he wrestled like one match at the Harold Nichols, um, and he ended up deep default now. Um, I, I thought it was a strange move. This kind of seemed like a year you and I was poised to make a top 10 run, um, you know, building on potentially one of the best finishes. Well, it would be the best finish under Schwab, but um, one of the best finishes in a long time for that program. 
And, uh, you know, I, I don't know, you know, Isaiah Patton was a top 100 recruit. I want to say maybe he was just outside the top 100 coming in. So I, he's obviously not a pushover to have as a backup, but, um, it's definitely a big hit to their middleweight depth, but I, I know they got, I mean, Jay Schwarm, did you see he beat the number 13 kid in the nation at 125? Yeah, no, not taking any prisoners. He's fired up. He's got a little chip on his shoulder from what I've been, from what I've been hearing. I, I can believe it. So, I mean, they, you know, you got a guy like Schwarm coming on. Uh, everyone's really excited about Rudy Yates. Um, Albers making that move, and you returned a couple All Americans. You know, Carter Isley, that's a big name coming into the lineup. So, this was a, this is a really, you know, this team can do really well this year, but um, obviously it's kind of a big, big loss to lose Dyer. He's one of our favorite wrestlers to watch, that's for sure. Yeah, I'd like to know more kind of about that decision. It just sounds like Doug and him talked and talked to him on takedown radio and it just seemed like the right decision to do mentally, it sounds like. Not physical issues. But we'll, we'll try to find more information on that. But yeah, you and I was poised to have a good year. Uh, they still could. They still could, but not the year I think they wanted. So we'll see how that goes in the future. But uh, they had, a, I think, a great all-star classic. Drew Foster was in it, but... You know, Max Thompson, I picked him to win that match, comes up clutch at the end against Kaladzic. He's down, and it just looked like it was ain't, ain't no thing but a chicken wing and got that take down at the end and came up clutch for the Panthers, come home, come home with a, a W for because Foster lost. Uh, Thompson, uh, he's kind of victim to being in, in Zane Rutherford's weight class, but... He's a dude that's got a lot of potential at this weight going forward. Um, he's going to have two more years after Zane graduates. And, and you think about you know him and and I, I, I guess I'm a little ignorant on the rest of the nation, but you know uh, Pat Lugo obviously going to be a name to watch too. But Thompson's going to be one of those title contenders here in a year. So it was really great to see him go out that All Star Classic, put, pick up a huge win. Uh, and the, and those are the kind of things he needs to do. He obviously kind of put it together at the end of the year, but he's got to finish those matches against the top guys. Um, early, you know, early on in his freshman year, he kind of struggled. Um, this summer, when he wrestled Brandon Sorensen at University Nationals, he kind of let you know a last second score. That that's pretty much the difference in between him and Sorensen. It's just he's got to get a little bit of that clutch gene going, and you know, seeing that win against Kladzik, that's. That's what you need to see, um, and then it's just a huge win, good momentum going into the season for him. So All Star Classic is behind us. You know, we've got uh, there was no Russell loss for Iowa State, nothing for you and I. Iowa had the Russell offs. We're gonna learn a little bit, you know, more about you know those teams. Uh, there are some Division three matches that happened. I kind of you know want to. I want to go back to that Nichols Open quick. Just I'm uh, talking about results a lot, I guess. You know, I Isaac Penn and Gremel, I think, was a shock to me. There was a they, those guys have been going back and forth. Pinned him in the first period. Leisure Majors Keaton Gertz, and then Lara beats Leisure in o, double overtime. So those were some crazy matches. We got that up on I Russell. So pretty pumped that Cam got those matches. I mean, those were kind of the major matches that I saw from the Nichols Open in the weekend, I guess, as far as name name worthy type stuff. Do you see anything else that I'm missing? Uh, I mean, we we hit on Schwarm beaten Hudkins of of Northern Illinois, but uh, Ian Parker had a really big weekend. At, you know that that was a big lineup battle at 133 for Iowa State. Simmons Parker, who's going to win? Um, and if you look at common opponents, you want to kind of do that transitive property stuff. Um, Marcus Simmons goes down in sudden victory to Jack Wagner and Ian Parker's able to get it done, you know, in a tight match against Jack Wagner. So that, I mean, then he goes on, Parker goes on to be Elijah Jeffrey, Iowa boy from Limar in the finals. So Parker, you know, posts a huge weekend. He's probably going to be the deserved starter when Drexel comes to town. Um, Drexel's got that stud true freshman, Austin DeSanto. You remember him, Tony? Yes. DeSanto? Yeah, yeah. So you text somebody in like less than a minute? 
Yeah, he he I did get a tech fall 58 seconds. I think against maybe UP, uh, U Pitt, Johnstown, but uh, he's also the guy that beat Spencer Lee in the state finals in PA. Uh, then he went out and majored Justin Mejia of California in the Dapper Dan or Pitt Wrestling Classic. So uh, he's obviously got this you know huge momentum. Everybody's sky high on him. Then he goes out and gets this 58 second tech. So everyone's talking about him. So this is a huge matchup coming into Sunday. Um, and obviously you like to see Parker coming in, riding his momentum wave here too. So got two guys, you know, on the, on the rise hitting each other here. Yeah. The wrestling season is here. I love it. I love seeing my Twitter feed blow up. I I love to see the haters and uh, the pretenders and all of it. It's been, uh, it's been fun. Uh, Anything else we need to get to here from last week? I mean, do you want to, do you want to talk about rest loss at Iowa at all? We can we can get uh, you had a really good article that kind of came that that kind of really shined a light on you know what we learned I guess but since you were there let's let's definitely I want to get your opinion on a couple of these matches I want to I want to get your opinion on the Warner match I've heard some people said that he he didn't look like he was going a hundred percent like he let off a couple times or he didn't. Uh, he wasn't putting out the effort that people were expecting from Warner. Is that just a perspective of people that I talk, a couple of people I talked to, or did you see that too? Uh, I was I was there for for Friday and Saturday, um, so I saw both of those matches. And I mean, I guess it probably depends on maybe what fans were looking for because he did go out and just completely dominate Stephen Holloway there on Friday, and then he comes up against Cash Wilkie, and it, it you know it's a lot tighter. But I think, um, you know, I think fans are doing a little bit of disservice to Cash Wilkie. I, I know this coaching staff is extremely happy with what uh, Wilkie did over the summer, the gains he's made. Um, you could just kind of hear them talking about how excited they were for Cash. Obviously, they're really excited about Jacob Warner's potential too. But um, they really think that, you know, Wilkie could do something this year if, you know, they didn't have Jacob Warner, if they redshirt him. So uh, I think... You know, it's just one of those things that right now Warner's a little green. Um, he look, He's looked really good in those two in-the-room matches. But, um, you know, I've kind of heard some other things that just there's a lot of things Warner needs to work on before he's going to be, you know, able to just do it every time uh, on the map, be able to be consistent. So I think it was just a little bit of that. He's He's got some learning to do, but he's, he's picking it up really quick. Is he – he kind of – it looks like like a ba- like just like a baby face. He reminds me of like like Sam Stoll coming in, just like this little silent but deadly dude. He doesn't have a lot of muscle definition. Just a you know, just a high school kid, right? I mean, is do you see that too? He definitely does look a look like he's got that uh, yeah, like you said, that baby face to him. Um, but I was impressed. You know, we're talking about Stephen Holloway, who wrestled heavyweight for the Hawkeyes last year. Um, I know Holloway's done a really good job managing his weight to get back to 97, but uh, Warner looked – I mean, Warner was huge next to Holloway, so size wasn't a, an issue at all for him. Uh, so he's – I don't know. He might be the real deal. I don't, I don't know if he goes this year or not, but he might be – you know, next year he he's a guy that can start pushing Colin Moore, I think. Is he taller than, than Holloway? Because Holloway's a beast. Yeah, Holloway's pretty big. Um, yeah. <laughs> They they were they got to be pretty close. Huh. I don't. I, I would say Holloway's got the probably got you know maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half. But I mean, Warner's just he's a solid dude through and through. Um, really excited to just watch him. He's he's fun to watch. Uh, I do have a couple other things I wanted to bring up though. Did you get into the drama of the when Iowa released these brackets about TBA at one twenty five? I just I just think it was. I, honestly, I I have no idea what the heck they were thinking. I don't think they were trying to play games or bring extra attention. I think it was just Iowa being Iowa. But what 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 were you thinking when going into it? I don't. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I understand uh, everything that went behind it, but from what I was told, it was always going to be Friday night match between Stickley Perez. Saturday morning match against Stickley and Perez. Um, and they put that TBA because that was the easiest way to make it on that bracket 
to have, uh, you know, they didn't want to put winner of Stickley Perez on the bottom. They put TBA because it would be the loser would go down to that side. So that's kind of what I was told uh, that they were always planning on having those two wrestle twice. Um, Spencer was not a factor. Uh, I, I didn't get that from the coaching staff, but I did ask around a little bit and they would say, you know, that there is, there's no way that that was meant to be Spencer Lee. And that comes from some, some pretty good, you know, Intel there. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up. So that was more people were just speculating, right? I mean, speculation, one thing, that's one thing with media is you, you can take one thing and it could be gone. Like it'd be on a whole nother planet of what somebody was thinking or meant to say in a tweet or something. It could be gone like and completely twisted. <laughs> so it's, it's nuts. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't take much anymore today. So here is what I am hearing. I'm hearing Brody Teske's ready to go. I have Brody Teske, but Spencer Lee's ready to go. Like he could like they think he, there's a good opportunity for him to actually wrestle this year and, and for, you know, the black and gold singlet. I, I think that's a possibility. I mean, we've heard Mark Perry talk about, you know, his recovery and, and I, I heard a little bit more on Friday that they were talking about, you know, him wrestling at wrestle house was just kind of a non-factor, but yeah, that it, it's legit possibility just based on his recovery that, you know, he's so dedicated to his rehab that, they're really impressed on on how quickly he's able to bounce back. So I I kind of agree. I mean, I probably don't have as concrete as info as you, but um, I heard that too. Well, you, I wouldn't say it's concrete info. I just people that are pretty close to the program yeah. are. You know, he's wrestling really well, like wrestling Thomas Gilman and frustrating Thomas Gilman. So if that that's happening. You know that he's on he's on that type of a level that he could compete for. All American status and you know, pop, maybe a national title if he's if he's that that healthy. So I would um, fans have to be happy about that. But what else, yeah. what do you see about Stickley? Now, this is we talked I don't know probably four or five podcasts ago, and I'm I'm a big fan of Stickley. I always have been. What did you see out of him, and what are your thoughts about his you know pr- pr- near future here? He looked good. Um, he looked a a little bit more sloppy on. On Friday, but Saturday he looked really well. Like he kind of cleaned up, you know. He got his positioning was a little off on Friday when he wrestled Perez, but uh, he was good to go. Saturday rolled 15-0. Um, you know, he, this is a guy that beat Jack Wagner last year up at 133. So if he's down at 25, which I was also told that that weight won't be an issue with Stickley. He's also another guy that that took a lot of dedication because he thought, you know, 125 could be his spot this year if, if Lee's red So um, So he, he's ready to go at 125. He did it the right way, as they like to say. And I think, you know, he could be an interesting option. I don't I don't know how much uh, production will get, uh, when you know, when he does go on the mat, but it's it's interesting. Uh, what, other, what other weight classes were – Anything that shocked you really? I mean, anything go to chalk? Didn't go to chalk like we we kind of thought it would. Yeah, I mean, going through the some of these other matchups, like at 133, uh, that battle's not over. But you know, Paul Glenn, credit to that guy wrestling through the whistle, um, is kind of a weird situation where, you know, the time's winding down, and how it ended up is is lock came up. You know, he's on his feet, and he he could see the clock in front of him. I mean, it was on the big TV screen, so he could see it kind of winding down. And I, I don't, I, he just relaxed, you know, when he thought time was going to be up. Uh, and Glenn tri- tripped him up, and you know, ref said his knee, the knees hit, so that's the takedown, and gave him the four-three victory. So um, I think that was kind of a surprise, but and really, what it does is open the door for Paul Glenn. And I, I really want to see how this battle goes. I think. You know, like you said, I was kind of a late register to the Grandview Open. I wonder if maybe some 133 and 141 guys go to Grandview, get some matches there, because you know, if once you determine the starter, you know, your competition dates aren't really going to matter if you set a guy. So um, that'll be interesting. 141 Turk looked good against Happel. I think he hit two double legs that looked really good. Happel was in on the legs, just couldn't finish. Um, 149, we saw Pat Lugo get in real deep, 
um, you know, on, on Sorensen, but he just couldn't finish. So I don't know if some more time he's going to figure out, but he, he looked really, you know, there's a couple times he should have had Sorensen dead to rights, but Sorensen's so good defensively that he able to fight out of it, got that third period takedown, which is what he needed to do. So I'd say those were some, you know, some of the matches people were really looking forward to. Obviously Sam Stoll came back too. What was the, what match was that where there was, I was reading your, your Twitter feed is, there's a stall call in overtime. That was on Friday. Uh, Max Mirren, true freshman, taking on Vince Turk. Um, a lot of people wanted to know where Max was at, and so you know, I don't. I don't Kurt Frost was the official. Um, obviously, a lot of people in Iowa know who Kurt is since he's a Don Bosco guy. So you know, we're really familiar with him. He was the official, and you know, off the whistle. You could tell Mirren's his first instinct was taking that he was stepping back, and so that's why in the end the call wasn't egregious. It was it was definitely warranting. You know, if your if your first move's always back, that's stalling. But at the same time, how many duels have we have we seen a guy wrestle like that, and the refs are content to swallow the whistle um, and let it actually be decided on the mat rather than their call. So that was the that was the only thing I kind of didn't like because I I felt Mirren got a little bit cheated that this wouldn't happen to him on the mat but uh, I I think it's a non factor anyway but it, it it was I don't know it, it's warranted but it's not because it's not called it's like how uh, I compare it to a ref in a football game is not going to call pass interference on a hail mary play you just don't ever see it yeah that's what I, the first thing I thought of was like I'm always like. In the closing seconds of the third period, like, ding this dude. Ding him, and they just don't because it's close to the end. They don't want the match to end on a stall call or someone to get – I just – or they don't want the match to go overtime because someone's up by one. I I, 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 I mean, I'm applauding. Like, this, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad at Kurt Frost for making the, the call, right? <laughs> I think this should happen. This should happen in more – matches more people should be hit for stalling if you back up boom ding for stalling now if you're sprawling that ain't stalling rocky lombardi shout out Boom, peace man sprawling ain't stalling uh, but I, I mean you're right i i hope this is a, a sign maybe things are going to get called that way a little bit better but i mean to me judge judging off last year's calls that wasn't you know hey, hey i heard something else at 141 yes I heard Pat Dugan is definitely eligible. Okay. So um, so is he going to be wrestling this weekend? I heard he's he's coming back from injury, um, which is why he wasn't part of the wrestle-off bracket. But I heard, even though this is like his third school in three years, he's eligible. How? He got, he got his waiver somehow, some way, but I was told... He can wrestle. Holy cow! Uh, I guess I mean I haven't I haven't watched him wrestle. I feel like he's I haven't watched no him one wrestle. Has. Yeah, no one's watched him wrestle. I have no <laughs> idea what to expect. I mean, is he better than Turk? Uh, you know that that weight class those guy. I mean, Hap, Carter Happel, four time state champ, Lisbon. I mean, what's he do? You know, can he power through the lineup later in the season? Is he going to go th- go a whole another year? Not you know, not making the lineup. That's a guy that could wrestle probably at a lot of schools. So then if you then if you're bringing in Dugan in there too, I mean if he's third man on the totem pole, what's Carter Happel do? It, it, it's it's kind of crazy because uh, I mean I, somebody told me they're like yeah Dugan is good to go for this year, and you know I I didn't believe him. I said there's no way, and I feel like my source is pretty solid. Um, so I'm willing to, to take the heat if I'm way wrong on this. But I heard Pat Dugan, good to go. So I love it. All right. All right. That, that may, I mean, you throw in Max Murin and, you know, all these guys are, are sophomore or younger. I mean, that's some, that's how you breed some competition. And, you know, that's uh, that's all, that gives you a lot to talk about when you've got four guys that can go in a week. Yeah, fighting for that position. That's what those guys need. I mean, we don't want Carter Happel to leave, right? If you're an Iowa fan, uh, so right. be interesting to see how that that shakes out. Anything else from wrestle offs? Uh, I mean, 
I, I kind of just barely hit on it, but I, I was happy to see old Sammy Stoll back on the mat too. Um, I haven't been following the morning stroll with Sam Stoll since uh, day two, but I'm really sad that the winner gets to pick the walkout song because I do love him coming out to Imperial March or Darth Vader sound. Agreed. Um, it's kind of like a tradition. Yeah, it's 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 pretty sweet. So, uh, and and I love that Cassiope did the same thing for Night of Conflict. That was that was also very fun. Um, so I, it'll be interesting. I'm going to the Iowa City Duels next week. Um, I'm pretty sure. So I, I kind of want to figure out what he's going to come out to. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'm thinking I'm going to make the trek out to the, the duels. That's that's a that's one of the duels that I the, the events I come out to. I usually let you take the reins on everything else. <laughs> You're kind of like the Iowa guy. I mean, Chris Brewer. I was talking to him about credentials. He's like, ah, yeah, we're not even going to give you a credential. We're going to you're going to be like a week to week kind of guy. So, <laughs> which I'm fine with. I mean, I'd rather have week to. You know, I've got credentials for you and I, Iowa State. Just go, go when I can go, right? So, um, yeah. All everyone knows, Ross Bichek can cover Iowa wrestling just fine. We love it. Um. All right, well, those wrestle offs are done. I'm glad they did them. I do wish they were streamed. I wish they were streamed. I think they would have the exact same amount of people in the in the wrestling room if they would have streamed it too. But you know, it is what it is. I get you know they want to keep things secret. But almost every other D1 school put it out on Facebook stream. So baby steps, maybe right? Baby steps. We got the wrestle offs back. Now we can maybe get you know baby steps into streaming it. But. Yeah, and it, there was a ton of people. I mean, it, Friday was pretty pretty well attended. Obviously, I didn't make it to Thursday with my work schedule, but um, so people came. You know, three different days. That's that's very telling. Um, I don't know, man. It, yeah, it's fun. It's a good environment to be in in that small of a room, and I don't know. Everyone's got their shoes off. <laughs> well, the season is here. Wrestle offs are done. For the most part, we're going to be at Grandview Open this weekend. There's going to be four or five Valle Wrestle people around, so come and say hi to us and let us know, uh, you know, how we can, you know, we like constructive criticism. Uh, I, I do take the, you know, some people sh- throwing pot shots at us as constructive criticism because maybe we weren't doing our part to let people know we were we were somewhere. So I do I do take. Uh, I do take constructive criticism, criticism for sure. So um, to me, that just fuels me to do a better job and to make sure everybody I wrestle is, you know, realizing that people do care. So yeah, I think it's idiotic to make you know stupid comments sometimes, but at the end of the day, I take it as constructive criticism too. So we'll, we we continue to grow at I wrestle. Just hit three million views. Yeah, that was a huge uh, huge goal for us. And we haven't even released high school rankings this year. So those are coming out in a couple weeks. And we expect uh, you all to come out and check out who's ranked, who's not, who should be. Well, we appreciate all those comments. So for Ross Barcheck, everybody at I Russell, thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, keeping uh, keeping us on your webpage favorites. Coming to I Russell every single morning before you get to work, at work, on your lunch break, and after. Until next time, I'm Tony Hager. Ross Barcheck, see you then. Yeah, 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 no, when the whistle goes.